Palmer amaranth is one of three weeds to have developed resistance against multiple herbicides in Nebraska. Researchers confirmed its resistance to atrazine and HPPD inhibitors in a south-central Nebraska cornfield in 2013. They confirmed its resistance to glyphosate in the state last year. This week, Nebraska Extension held a field day sponsored by the Nebraska Corn Board aimed specifically at managing resistant Palmer amaranth. As you'll hear in our interview with University of Arkansas's Jason Norsworthy, who spoke at the event, Palmer amaranth is a fast-growing weed that can produce up to a million seeds per plant. For crop producers across the country, it's made the overall resistance battle much more difficult. Basically, resistance happens from just the repeated use of any particular strategy. And as I spoke today, it's, it doesn't really matter if it's a herbicide or even gave an example today of even resistance to hand weeding. Going out and doing the same strategy year after year is ultimately going to lead to resistance. But in the context of most of the crops, corn, soybean that we're dealing here today, it's generally the repeated use of a herbicide year after year until that herbicide is no longer uh, functioning or working. How do you tell if you have a resistance or a weed resistant to something in your field? No, when you have a weed population and you've killed every weed in the field except for one particular weed, that's a good indication that you have a resistance. If you have a small patch of weeds and over time that small patch is growing, uh, you probably have resistance. If you go to a field and you have, today we talked about Palmer amaranth, if you have Palmer amaranth or a pigweed for instance and you have dead plants and live plants right beside each other, it's a very good indication that you have resistance and at that point we really need to do something to get in on uh, uh, in front of that and make sure that we don't have further spread of that resistance. Describe for me the problems that U.S. farmers are facing with Palmer amaranth. You know, Palmer amaranth has spread. 2005, it was found in Georgia. We found it in, uh, in Arkansas in 2006. Today, Palmer amaranth is found in 30 states across the U.S. Glyphosate-resistant Palmer amaranth is actually found in 30 states. And, and glyphosate, or Roundup, was uh, the, was the uh, most effective herbicide that really we've ever seen and I contend we'll ever see probably in our lifetime. And it's, it's really unfortunate. There's vast acres today. There's estimates that we're probably talking upwards of 70 uh, to 80 million acres of cropland in the U.S. today that are infested by glyphosate resistant uh, weeds, not necessarily Palmer amaranth, but Palmer amaranth in itself is spreading. And we talked today about uh, the spread, you know, combines, as individuals come south and they buy a, a combine, it moves north. We talked about cotton seed hulls and individuals buying, again, products out of, out of the south. Uh, this is a weed that really is a desert-like uh, plant. It thrives under hot, dry conditions, but it also does quite well on these very fertile uh, soils up here in Nebraska and elsewhere. In the scope of difficulty, tell me how much more difficult it is for farmers to maintain positive yields with Palmer amaranth resistant to certain chemicals? You know, Palmer amaranth, once you lose options in terms of control, you can quickly lose uh, lose effectiveness of anything that you have in that field. You just get overpowered from a numbers game. And what we've seen is uh, Palmer amaranth, just complete crop loss in cases where you have resistance and you have no other options that you can go into that field. And, and I know in the Mid-South, we have individuals that are no longer farming today. They've ultimately lost the farm as a result of Palmer amaranth and uh, the fact they weren't able to maintain high yields but I've seen I've seen vast acres where individuals would go from 50 bushel 60 bushel beans down to 10 15 bushel beans uh, in areas where Palmer amaranth just basically overpowered the, the crop and you're talking about a plant that uh, generally speaking is going to produce 60,000 100,000 seed but on these edges of the fields uh, can produce upwards of a million seed and with that you just begin to overpower the crop and not only the this overpowering mainly due to the fact that, as I mentioned today, you've got a plant that grows uh, two, two and a half inches per day. Once it gets up to about four to five inches, it really takes off in terms of growth. And at that point, there are no chemical options in terms of removing it from a field. So what's the solution now? What do farmers do? Solution now is, is try to get in front of it. And there, there is not a lot of acres infested. For instance, Palmer amaranth, not a lot of acres infested in the state of Nebraska. If you find Palmer amaranth on your farm today, we talked today about a zero tolerance uh, threshold. 
world. I'd make every effort possible to ensure that I don't have I don't have seed production. If you do have some infestations on there, make everything uh, take every step possible to ensure that those plants do not produce seed. Is it going to cost some money? Absolutely, it will cost money today. But I can assure you, in the long run, it's going to pay for itself because you're going to have some herbicides that are still going to work several years from now versus losing one herbicide after another. We talked about the resistance treadmill. As you go through these herbicides, we're quickly approaching the day where these guys are not going to have any options on, on weeds like Palmer Amaranth. Reinforce to me in the end how important it is that farmers realize the importance of different modes of action. You know, I think that's something that uh, farmers at times really struggle with. It's not only realizing different modes of action, but effective modes of action and you can go to a field and you can actually have two modes of action in that field but for instance i gave today the example if i have a glyphosate resistant palmer amaranth and we bring in another herbicide that's effective that's only one effective mode of action if you already have glyphosate resistance growers have got to understand if they have weeds in their field which every grower does what potential herbicides to which those weeds are resistant? Because otherwise you will not be able to get multiple effective modes of action on the acre. And not only getting multiple effective modes of action, as I indicated today, we really prefer to see two effective modes of action in a tank together. And the reason being is if we have an escape within that field, we can control it with the second mode of action. Otherwise, that plant is going to survive. If that plant survives, by the time you come back in with a sequential application, it will be too large, you will not be able to effectively control it, and you will quickly go through modes of action. So we've got to understand we need two effect, at least two effective modes of action on that acre, and you got to understand what works and what does not work when it comes to resistance management.